If you're just starting out with visual effects inside of Blender, one of the most important milestones is learning how to camera track. It's a very daunting task since every single video requires a slightly different approach to camera tracking. In today's video, we're going to be doing a first for the channel and review an add-on that tries to do the tough work for you. Full disclosure, I was contacted by the creator of the add-on with a free license and affiliate link which you can find down below if you want to support the channel, but I was not paid to give my thoughts or promote the add-on in any way. All of that to say, these are my full thoughts on the add-on and whether I believe it's worth it for Blender users. Anyways, I'm breaking this video into two parts. First is a basic tutorial of how to use the add-on, and then I'll give my final closing thoughts at the end, so let's jump into it. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is go ahead and download the add-on. I have a link for you to download that down below, and once you have that downloaded, you'll have a zip file, and basically what we need to do is go to edit, preferences, go to the add-on section, and we want to install and locate that zip file. And once you have that zip file selected, you just want to install the add-on here. And then once you have it downloaded, you'll see this box appear. Basically, you want to have that selected. And then if you want to come down here and save the preferences, just so it saves on all of your settings. So now that we have the add-on enabled, we need to go up to plus VFX and motion tracking, and then you'll see this auto tracker setting on the side. Now you can see right here that we have a name of sequence, and that is very important to note. This add-on only works for image sequences, but honestly, if you're a visual effects artist, you should already be working with uh, image sequences anyway, so it shouldn't be too big of a deal. In order to convert your footage to an image sequence, we're going to go plus video editing, video editing, and then we're just going to add a movie. And then inside of here, you can set the resolution, the frame rate, everything like that. And then output settings, you just want to select where you want it to be saved. It's already set as a PNG file output. We can go ahead and set it to be RGB. And then the compression, you can change it to whatever compression ratio you want. And color depth for this specific shot is 8. And so once you have all that settings and the start and end keyframe done here, you can come up and render the animation. Okay, so now that we have that, let's go ahead and delete this from the video editing tab. And then inside of the motion tracking, we need to go ahead and open up our uh, image sequence that we just made. Okay, so here it is. I'm going to hit A to select everything and open the clip. And now you can see that we have our image in our scene. Just like any other kind of manually camera tracking uh, inside of Blender, we need to go ahead and set the scene frames and prefetch our footage. And then I also want to come over here to the render properties, go down to color management and set it to standard if it's not already. That's just the correct color space that video is working. Let's go ahead and bring some of these settings out. And now we're actually ready to get inside of the add-on. So the first thing we want to do is come over to the auto tracking settings and we have all of these settings here. Of course, we do want to place paste the name of the sequence in here. So I'm just going to select this name up here, copy and paste that right there. And then if you already know the focal length, you want to go ahead and put that in here. Since this was a footage I found online, uh, we're not going to really know that focal length. Uh, you can be, you can guesstimate it or use a program such as FSpy to get a good uh, kind of focal length yourself. But we can also do auto focal length and I'll try to guesstimate it for us. Now you can mess around with the pattern size and search size uh, depending on your shot. However, I find that these kind of default values are pretty good for, uh, you know, majority of the shots. Now the final thing that we need to do before we go ahead and auto track is uh, tell the program what our solve error, our desired solve error is. And so usually I like to stay below a 0.2. And so that's what I'm going to put. I'm going to put 0.2 right there. And so it's going to try to achieve that solve error and give us a really good result. So now that we have all that set up, all we have to do is start auto tracking and solving. Now, depending on your computer specs and also the amount of frames that you're working with with your footage, this might take five minutes, but it also might take upwards to 30 minutes to an hour. Okay, so this took about a minute for me just because it's a shorter kind of frame length and it's a very smooth kind of drone shot. And so it was able to give me a solve error of a 0.12, which is actually really good. This is totally viable for, you know, what I would be doing inside of Blender camera tracking. So now that we have the camera solve, we actually need to go ahead and set up our tracking scene. And so we can come up to the solve tab. We want to set background and tracking scene. And then we want to go ahead and orientate our floor to the floor plane up here. So I'm just going to select kind of three dots on the floor. I'm just going to use this kind of area to be my floor plane. So select that and that's set our floor. I'm going to set this to be our origin. And then uh, this one we can set to be our X axis just to rotate the scene. And that is literally everything. We can come out to the layout tab and we'll have everything set up, our camera, our plane, everything. And you can see it's giving us a really good result. If I actually come up here and go ahead and GZ, just move that upwards and then hide our ground plane, you'll see if I kind of play this footage, it is tracking to our ground uh, phenomenally. And so depending on your footage, your mileage may vary, but I was able to achieve this result in under five minutes. Okay, so now for my final thoughts. 
I've ran many different tests with past videos I've manually camera tracked before, as well as some new footage to really test the program. Remember, any footage that has moving objects such as people, cars, etc. will not work, and from my testing that holds up to be true. Really unfortunate since that already limits the amount of footage that you can use. I was super skeptical of the add-on at first, however, I was pleasantly surprised of how well it worked for the majority of the footage I tested. I was able to consistently get low solve errors with good ground planes, so the add-on works as advertised there. That said, a majority of the videos that gave me the best results were videos I was able to easily camera track manually, however, depending on your computer specs, the add-on might be slightly flat faster to get a good solve. Some of the more difficult scenes were hit or miss. For example, my old green screen footage was not able to achieve a good track and failed after many attempts of changing the settings. I would consider this a medium difficulty track since the markers become blocked throughout the footage and there isn't a lot of detail in the floor slash surrounding areas. Again though, since I have been camera tracking for a while now, I was able to problem solve and get a good manual track myself, beating the software in that regard. So is this add-on something you should consider for your workflow? Eh, yes and no. I think it really depends on the type of artist you are and where you are in terms of experience. Intermediate to expert level artists such as myself are already at camera tracking in other software that will give you way better results than anything you can achieve inside Blender. Blender camera tracking is alright, however you should really be pushing yourself away from it. That's why I can't recommend this software to intermediate and above users. However, if you are a beginner to Blender or someone who specializes in another aspect such as animation, modeling, or anything else and really just need to get a decent camera track fast, then I think this add-on is a good value for what it offers and will most likely give you a better result than if you were to do it manually. There is something to be said about this being kind of a hacky method for learning and that it won't teach you a lot of the basics of camera tracking so keep that in mind if that's something you care about as well. This really does offer about the same one click experience as camera tracking inside of After Effects and one day I hope Blender adds this as a optional setting with the default package. Hopefully this video has helped you with your decision and again if you are interested I have an affiliate link for you to download the add-on down below. Thanks again for watching and I'd appreciate it if you consider liking and subscribing as it would help me out with the YouTube algorithm. Anyways I will see you in the next video.